Good morning, everybody. Come on, let's get up. Hallelujah. Oh, my goodness. You know, Reverend Johan, good morning and welcome to CSL Simi Valley Virch, our virtual church. Reverend Johan and I were sitting here talking about that song and, you know, it's become our theme song, as you know, and I tell you what, I don't get tired of it. I don't know about you, but I'm like, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, my goodness. I'm so glad I oiled my chair because otherwise it would have just been squeaking away. <laughs> oh my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Well, welcome, welcome. Glad to have you here. In case you didn't know, that's who I am right there. Okay, cool. I like my little buttons. Uh, wow. Okay, let me just breathe. I get so excited to be with you. I, I, I sometimes forget to <sighs> breathe. Air is good, as Papa used to say. Granddaddy used to say, air is good. There's so much going on oh, between the, the, the actual joy of hope that's coming up and the pain that sparks that hope and that joy. It's what a, just a concophony of emotions coming together, colliding within my heart and my mind and my soul. Maybe the same for you. There's a lot here. We'll talk about some of that as the morning goes on, but let's, let's, uh, Oh, it's June fourteenth. You know what that means? It's Flag Day. Absolutely, it's Flag Day. You know, it's an interesting uh, thing. This, this flag of ours it started out with thirteen uh, stars and a circle, thirteen red and white stripes. And it's, it's something that we have celebrated. Not a national holiday, but definitely something that we celebrate in our country. And it's very interesting. It's Flag Day on June fourteenth. Then on Friday, it'll be Juneteenth, both of them ce celebrating the ideals of our nation. I find it so interesting that a group of white men who thought of a certain group of men as being fractions and women being fractions of a whole person and women not being included in voting or almost property at that time as well, it's it's crazy when you it's mind boggling when you think about it had to be divinely inspired for these men to create something with the kind of ideals that we hold in this country and that we see people running out into the streets to hold up onto um, kneeling before the flag is has become a, a magnet for people's energy either pro or con these various movements whether it's a sign of disrespect or not is for you to determine for yourself i have my own opinions about it that's the beautiful thing about science of mind individualized expressions of spirit getting to make their choices for themselves i contend that we can respect things and do it in a non-violent way and draw attention to uh, these ideals and make them real in our lives that's our journey as we practice this idea of wholeness and oneness that we so deeply believe and how wonderful it is to have these two celebrations close together flag day where we get to look at the ideals of our nation and make them real in our lives and Juneteenth where an opportunity where we had a movement to make that take place you know what Juneteenth is Juneteenth is that day 
I didn't know. Back in 1974, I was in Austin, Texas. I was at a friend's house, and he says, hey, you coming to the Juneteenth barbecue on Friday? And I was like, no, he didn't say on Friday. I'm sorry. He said, are you coming to the Juneteenth barbecue? And I said, sure, when is it? And he said, it's Juneteenth. And I said, okay, when is that? And he looked at me, and he went, it's Juneteenth, dude. Juneteenth. See, in Texas, they knew because in Texas is where Juneteenth started. Because in Galveston Bay, the, the the Emancipation Proclamation was shipped into Galveston Bay and read out loud. And that's when the slaves in Texas realized that freedom had been granted to them. Right. And so that celebration is spread now all across the nation and it's june 19th and so on this friday we get to celebrate another uh, milestone in our freedom and also to look more carefully at what's going on in our country from that lens from that lens and as spiritual beings uh, living this experience and coming together in this particular teaching or whatever teaching the christian teaching the you know jesus was an outcast right uh, he sat with the with the lepers and he he hung with those that were with the beggars and the people of the streets. He was the kind of guy that would be I think he'd be out there with his own sign. So we need to think about these things as we move forward in the week ahead. And so there's there it is. Uh, National uh, Flag Day is also the opening of National Flag Week. So we have the whole week to think about these ideals and to make them real in our lives. Another thing we do at our center, as well as look at the national, international, and world situations that can bring us more peace, more harmony, and more joy in our lives. We look at those individuals in our church that are doing wonderful things to make things happen, and there is one of those that is the June Volunteer of the Month for his continuous and tireless outstanding service to our community as the center and also to the world. We celebrate... Gregory Seymour, there he is in his mask at the senior center cooking meals. Uh, he cooks. He's the chef at the senior center. He cooks oh four hundred meals a day. Something about uh, it's just an incredible amount of meals. I've actually been going down there with him on Mondays to uh, to wash dishes because he lost his dishwasher. So not only is he cooking the meals, he's washing the dishes too. If you'd like to do that and help him and support him, call him up. He's got some days available to go out and support his service. And so we just thank you for Gregory Seymour. Also he. He has been doing the uh, Play and Learn with Dr. Susan each uh, Sunday morning. He's there live uh, photographing those for her and also shooting the next two. So we get three of those each week. That's Gregory Seymour. He just stands up and he's a stand-up guy. He's also the president of our board of trustees. And we just want to celebrate him and acknowledge the great work that he has done for our center. Thank you, Gregory. All right. I have dishpan hands because of you and I love it. <laughs> Ah, so those are some of the things that we do in our community to create a, a live version of our vision and our mission statement, which we say each week together. I invite you to say it at home while I say it here. Follow along with me. I will put it on the screen for you. Here it is right now. We're community, inclusive, loving, and authentic. We celebrate all paths to God in gratitude, empowering self and others. We serve compassionately through outreach, inspiration, and education. That's who we are. That's why we're here. And here's what we do. Hi ho, hi ho. It's off to Birch we go. There's lots of stuff we do each week. We love to let you know. Good morning, CSL. I'm Mark Backrack, the Candid Cantor. And I'm Dina Sloniker, and I had nothing to do with dressing this man. Oh, well, I'm wearing my favorite stay-at-home facial accessory. Rabbi Grizzly Adams was blowing these out on Amazon last week. Like I said, I had nothing to do with dressing him. Well, listen, we like, like to, to have, have fun. fun. And we know that you do, too. And Reverend Stephen told us to have fun with these announcements. So here goes. Uh, tangent alert, Reverend Stephen. Be careful what you ask for. <laughs> Hi-ho, hi-ho. It's off to Birch we go. There's lots of stuff to do this week. And now we'll tell you more. This week's Wednesday night experience. Poetry 
as spiritual practice with Reverend Johanna von Gelder. In Re Reverend Johanna's own words, Poetry as a spiritual practice is about living in the poetry of one's life, in its beauty, inspiration, creativity, and expansiveness. By inviting contemplation through sacred poetry, you'll feel increased spaciousness, space to support your journey of intimate discovery, to know your true self and your very own essence. So, zoom on over. Join Reverend Johanna and lots of CSL See Me folks. It's this Wednesday night, June 17th at 7 p.m. <laughs> right. So listen, you got a pencil? Okay, good. The meeting number is 871-996-22578. Did you get that? No? I'm kidding. It's so much easier to just click the link on the front page of the CSL See Me website. If you've never been there, just Google CSL See Me. Yeah. S-I-M-I, -I, not S-E-E-M-E. S-I-M-I, -E -E. CSL S-I-M-I. -I. At first, you'll be placed in a waiting room. What? No, really. A waiting really? room? Yeah. Okay. The host will then give you access to the Wednesday night experience. Got kids? Watch, play, and learn with Dr. Susan. Dr. Susan Holton is our youth and family director. Dr. Susan's play and learn lessons are posted during the week to our YouTube channel, CSL Simi Valley. You know, you can also watch Dr. Susan live streaming, 9.30 a.m. every Sunday morning on the cslsimi.org website. Reverend Stephen presents Practicing Oneness at One, live on Facebook, 1 o'clock, every weekday afternoon, Monday through Friday. Catch 10 wonderful minutes of reflection, inspiration, and support. That's weekdays at 1 p.m., right there on Reverend Stephen's personal Facebook page. So what you do is you go on Facebook and you search for Stephen Rambo. That's Stephen with a P like pastor. Yeah, and uh, Rambo, like a... Uh, RAMBO! <laughs> While you're there, send him a friend request. Uh, right, Dina. Listen, join Reverend Stevens' 1,963 other Facebook friends, and you can be number 1964. It's so easy these days, thanks to our smartphones and tablets, to make movies. And as you can see, in our case, it can be a little bit too easy. Right, <laughs> Reverend Stephen? Shoot a short movie of yourself greeting the community. Yeah, let your creative juices flow while having fun being you. We'll debut your virtual masterpiece at the end of the service. Less is more. No longer than 30 seconds, please, Max. Email your clip to RevSteven at CSLCME.org. Hey, could you use some spiritual support? Your center's practitioners and ministers are available, available to provide spiritual and emotional support. You can request prayer or ask questions by email or telephone. Phone numbers, email addresses are listed on the website. Visit cslcme.org. Click on About Us for a pull-down menu. Scroll to our practitioners. Yeah, old school. You can also call the office to leave a message. Do you know someone who can't be here with us right now? Let them know this morning's service will be uploaded to our YouTube channel, CSLC Valley, later today. Also, a link to all the archived Virch services can be found on the homepage at our website. All together now, cslcme.org. <laughs> Usually, the first thing we do each week, right at the top of these announcements, is ask for your support in connecting others to our Virch service. This week, we're trying something different. Can you tell? In a moment, Sherry Deeds will sing one of our community songs. The words will be on the screen for you to sing along. Or, or you can use the time to click that little share arrow and invite a friend, a family member, or other loved one to join with all of us. Last week we had a dozen 
shares. Let's go for two dozen shares. No this more, week. More, 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 more. It's just a really simple way to share this valuable, useful teaching. It's also how we stay together while being apart. Hey, welcome to all of you viewing from wherever you are. We're really grateful you're spending this time with us. And now, Sherry Deeds! <laughs> Jennifer and Krishanu and it's time for our affirmation. I will read it to you and then please when I'm finished read it back with me for a second time. My intentions are in harmony with spirit making my life a divine masterpiece. Please repeat. My intentions are in harmony with spirit, making my life a divine masterpiece. Our reading today is by Julia Cameron. She's the author of The Artist's Way, and this book is Prayers to the Great Creator, and it is a compilation of books that she wrote over time, all filled with prayers and blessings, and I really recommend it. Our prayer today from Julia Cameron is, my life is shaped by divine guidance to greater beauty. I open myself to the freedom of change. I bless the changes which come to me. Trusting in change, I relax my grip on the contours of my life and I allow new beginnings. I allow alteration, accommodation, and change. I invite the interaction of imagination and possibility and I surrender all my agendas, outlines, and plots. Recognizing that life is both active and interactive, I hold out my hand to dance, knowing that I am partnered more variably and creatively than I can yet conceive. I bless the changeable creativity of life in its unfolding. Let us pray. We 
We know spirit has that infinite pool of wisdom, beauty, and power from which we have been born to create, made in the exact image of our creator. Opening to all possibility, we align ourselves with our highest good and we let go. So grateful for this time spent in spiritual community, a time for us to remember and study this highest truth that we are that perfection that is God, that we are whole just as this image, that our lives are a perfect, ever-changing creation of and as and for the one. May this service be blessed through each of our open hearts and open minds. I release these words, and so it is.
Hi, it's time for our gap meditation, and we're not going to go into silent meditation today. We are going to go into the symphony of nature, the symphony of my heavy feet, of the squirrels running in the trees up above, and we're going to let our thoughts fade away and go into the awareness of the beauty that is spirit, that is nature. So please enjoy these three minutes and then I'll be back. Here ends our nature meditation.
That helps. That was beautiful. I am so blessed. I am at peace. I'm especially at peace now that I remember to turn the sound up for you. <laughs> okay. Checking all the dots and all the dials. Crossing my T's and dotting my I's. There's a dot in my T's and crossing my I's. Okay, all. Hmm. Time for that breath I was talking about. Today, I'm bringing you, let me go up here for you, the talk. It's called Be a Mental Maestro, a Visionary Virtuoso. Mental Maestro, a Visionary Virtuoso. We are at a time for a new vision. It's always a time for a new vision, but this seems like a collective vision taking place, at least in our country and uh, spreading around the world. And I'm calling us to our, hmm, our inherent innate nature to create. That's part of who we are. We are creative beings. We can't help it. Our thoughts are creative. That's just the way it is. So why not be visionaries in that experience? And visionary is a person with, with very keen insight, a person that is able to call into being through their experience, through their knowledge, through their wisdom, through their intention, what is already there to be called into being, if that makes sense. The visionary is the one that can see what's being called into being. And so many of us are seeing a new thing being called into being. And given our time, we need to uh, pay attention to what's taking place. And as we pay attention to what we intend, that's when that creative thought starts to follow the line of our thinking. The question I ask us today is, are we willing to experience what we are thinking? And if we are thinking the same thing we've always been thinking, we're going to get the same thing we've always gotten. But if we can be the visionary, right, if we can be the visionary, then we can see something new. We can move beyond what has appeared to be deafening silence. But now the deafening silence is awful loud. It's quite loud. It's loud in the streets. It's loud in the news. It's loud in the virtual world. This week, I opened up my email. SoundSight was doing something on racial and social justice. The Insight Timer was giving new meditations for uh, dealing with the pain and the trauma that's coming up through the body, as well as the, the complexity of the energy and the emotions that's moving through us, because so much is happening. Just in the last 48 hours, in the, in the capital of the South, talking about Emancipation Day, talking about um, um, Juneteenth coming up, right there in Atlanta, Georgia, we've got another investigation going on, on another shooting that's being called into question. Another black man down, lost his life at the hands of police. There is something coming up for us being called for us, and I believe that it is a spiritual calling that's taking place. We are a teaching that believes in oneness, that believes in wholeness. How can we experience that oneness when we uh, divide people so, so intensely? And because our thoughts are so creative, because they constantly are making things happen. Dr. Holmes tells us that there's something we need to do with that thought. Let me bring this quote up for you. One of the most important things for us to do is to remember that we are always causing something to be created for us and that whatever cause we have set in motion must produce some kind of an effect. Check that out now. Listen, we are always always causing something to be created for us. And whatever cause has been set in motion must produce some kind of effect. And this is where I'm calling us out to be mental maestros. See, the mental, the maestro is a master of his art, of her art, of its art. The master of its thought, its mind, its life. Can we be that mental maestros? And the art, being the master of art, Art is to create something that is aesthetically pleasing, is beautiful, and is also appealing. We think of art as being solid matter things, right? But if we can be that mental maestro and create something that is aesthetically pleasing, beautiful, and, and appealing, can it be something that is intangible but made solid? Solid. More salad. Am I hungry? Solid. This week, uh, Reverend Johanna and I were listening to a meditation from uh, Guru Mai at the City Yoga website. It was facilitated by one of her students in Brazil, and he talked about bringing things into form. 
And what came to me in that idea was, can we bring things that appear intangible, appear not solid, and see them as solid? Can we bring compassion and make it solid? Can we bring peace and make it solid? Can we bring justice and make it solid? And I contend that the mental maestro can do that because as Dr. Holmes has already told us, we are always creating something. Can we create something that is so real and physical in its form that it becomes something we can step into the way you can step into a car, the way you can step into a house, the way you can ingest a meal? Can we make these intangibles, justice, harmony, peace, right action, uh, equality, equity, can we make those things so physically real that we can touch them and have those experiences? Can we use our mind to move above the law of averages? If we are sticking with just what's been going on, we're going to get what's been going on. But the mental maestro is able to specialize his use of the law. Is able, I'm able to specialize my use in the law, and then I can move from, 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 from grief into joy. I can move from bondage into freedom. I can move from bias into equity. Not equality. Equality is good, but equity. Equity. Have you seen some of you? Have you seen the video? It's a it's a it's a box, it's a fence. It's a it's a graphic. And sometimes in the graphic it describes the difference between equity and equality. And it shows uh, three people standing behind a fence. And one person can already see over the fence. And the next person can barely see over the fence, maybe if they're up on the tippy 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 toes. And then the last person could not see over the fence at all. Now, in equality, every person gets a box and they can stand a little taller. So now the tippy toe person can just see over like this. And the other person can still not see, but their head is close to the top of the fence. And the first person who could see over the fence is seen even better over the fence because they're all standing on the same boxes. That's equality. Equity is what we're talking about. And I think equity is what's being called for in our streets. Equity is when the box is given to let everybody see over the fence. But there's another thing that we could do. And this is what the mental maestro does. This is what the visionary, the visionary virtuoso does. They see something even better than giving everybody a box. How about cutting down the fence so that people can just see straight ahead? How about changing the wood fence to a chain link fence so you can see through it, right? But it's hard when we're seeing so many things that are breaking our hearts right now. Um, uh, uh, Makila Chopra, I think it is her her name, Chopra, Chopra's daughter, Makila Chopra, she wrote a book called Living with Intent. And in it, she says, it's a struggle for all of us to focus on the good things when the bad weighs so heavily on our minds. Right now, the bad is weighing heavily on our minds. But in this journey to become the mental maestro, the journey to become the visionary virtuoso, which is really the journey to practice the science of mind fully, science of mind, science, science. How things work. That's what my, my, my teacher taught me about science of mind. Science, how things work. Mind, another word for the infinite intelligence, universal presence, God itself. So science of mind is how the universal intelligence works. And one of the ways that it works is to be constructively using it. And when we consciously use it, we become that mental maestro that I'm saying we can be. We become that virtuoso, that vision that I'm saying we can be. The virtuoso is one who has a specialized skill, a specialized skill and talent that has been honed through practice. So can we use our mind that way as a virtuoso? Can we use our mind creatively, constructively, consciously, as an individual and also collectively when we do that? You see, the virtuoso knows how to use intention to clear a path that creates definite, measurable results. And that path is a pathway that we take individually for ourselves, And by extension, we take it for others. But we must define what that is for ourselves. Uh, Howard Thurman, in a wonderful book, oh my gosh, Howard Thurman, he's got a book called Jesus and the Disinherited. And, and Disinherited. And in it he says, For every man there is a necessity to establish as securely as possible the lines along which he proposes to live his life. Now, you know, Howard Thurman wrote at a time when the male gender was the generic way of speaking. I'm sure with his consciousness, if he were alive today, this sentence would read, for every human, there is necessarily, there is a necessity to establish as securely as possible lines along which one proposes to live one's life. But don't get lost in, in that. 
Don't get lost in the gender here. Get lost in the phrase he's putting before us. For every person, for every man, woman, there is a necessity to establish as securely as possible the lines along which we propose to live our lives. We are called, we are at a time now where we're being called to define what lines we're going to live our lives. And when we define that purpose with intention, when we define that purpose with the skill of a maestro, when we define that purpose with the vision of a virtuoso, then we can lift the tide for all. We can go beyond the known boundaries that we've currently experienced. You know, for um, many years, uh, the Spanish explorers had a phrase, a motto on their ships that said, Ne plus ultra. Uh, pardon my, my accent, but I got the S right. It's Spanish. Plus, not French. Plus. You know, that's why it's San Luis Obispo. It's Spanish. It was French. It'd be San Luis Obispo. But no. Ne plus ultra. Which means there's no more beyond here. But then, they started sailing across the Atlantic and landed upon a land which they claim to have discovered, but we know that's not the story. There were people already there, living there for 14,000 years. But the point was, they went beyond the boundaries that they had known. So they had to change the model. They had to redefine the lines upon which they were living, and they changed it to plus ultra, which means there's plenty beyond here. We are in a plus ultra moment in our lives. There is plenty beyond here. We can go beyond the known boundaries, but it will take the maestros of mental use and power. It'll take the virtuosos of vision to get us beyond the boundaries we are currently experiencing. We are at what is known as a liminal moment. I love that word, liminal moment. Limin is a, a Latin, relates to a Latin term that means threshold. We're at a threshold moment. And threshold is also related to the phrase threshing, which is where you separate the, the grain from the chaff. The grain is contained within the chaff. So as we separate this liminal moment, as we move beyond what is around the core of our lives to get to that purity that's at the center of being, that oneness that's at the center of being, that's our liminal moment that we're standing in front of right now as we move from this, uh, this outer state of, of confusion to an inner state of peace and justice and harmony. So it's time for us to begin to think and act in genuinely new ways and we're seeing that. We're seeing that in protests. We're, it's been 14, 15 days. It, it, it takes 30 days. If it takes 100 days, it will take the days it takes. But we must not let this go like a news cycle until the next big thing comes along that becomes the latest news. This is a time. We've been, we've been called to be uncomfortable, to move between that is betwixt and between. This morning, uh, Johanna and I were talking about something from the Pima Children book where uh, she met uh, Rinpo, uh, Rinpoche. And, and, and he told a story of going to a, 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 a retreat center, a castle uh, center, and they had a guard dog. And, and, and the guard dog was howling, growling, spittle coming out of its mouth. Its eyes were red. It looked so vicious. And, and his attendants and he were walking past the dog. And as they walked past the dog, the dog broke from its chains and started running at them. And what did, what did Rinpoche do? He turned and ran growling at the dog and the dog put his tail between his legs and ran off. Because see, he, he understood that these uncomfortable boundaries can be changed why we, as we set these, these limits for ourselves, as we move beyond the boundaries. But see, right now we're in this confusing space. We're not quite completely out of one room, not quite completely in the other room. In other words, we're on the margins. We're on the margins. Well, a lot of people have lived on the margins and they're tired now. They want to move beyond to new boundaries. And on the margins is where the transformation happens. Let's say you're typing something on your typewriter or, you, or you're, you've made a document and, and, and you want to get it all on one page, but it's not all on one page. We're talking about oneness, right? We don't want the word split. I know these are crazy metaphors, but think about this. We don't want the word split. We want it all on one page. We want us all on one life in one space of harmony. So what do you do? You expand the margins. You open up the margins. That's where the transformation happens. In a wonderful uh, book on one I've been reading here, this is a guy named Mark Lompert. Let me show you this one. He says, To pay attention to margins is to pay attention to how boundary lines are constructed in our world and our lives, and then to cross those boundaries. 
to pay attention to margins is to pay attention to how boundary lines are constructed in our world and lives and then to cross those boundaries. We are at a space where we're finally paying attention to some margins and it's going to take, take us to, to, to cross those boundaries, to expand our lives. And not this is not just for the people that we see that are living on the margins. If anybody's living on the margins, we're all living on the margins. That's what oneness is all about. This call here that we're seeing in our world today is a call for all of us to live a higher level of harmony and peace in the world. It's not for one group or another group. It's for every group, it's the way we work this. It's one group that's perhaps a couple of groups that are leading us in, into this charge because there are so many marginalized people. Yes, the Black Lives are Matter, but we got to remember that not a few months ago, we were concerned about families on the border living behind chain link fences and being separated from their, their, their parents, from their kids. There's so many people that are floating in boats to get away from, from, from challenging lives across the Mediterranean. Around our world, there are people that are living on the margins and our lives are being called to expand the boundaries to bring everybody onto the same page. But this takes something else that seems really strange in these moments. It actually takes appreciation for the moment that we're in. It takes appreciation for the hurt and the pain that we're feeling because in that appreciation, we can also find some optimism that there is something better available to us. This is this is the spiritual practice that we're all being called to. We are here in this moment for a reason. We are here in this teaching for a reason. And these things that are happening for us indicate to me at least that we are prepared for this moment. There's a, I love the animal stories because in the animal stories, the animals always talk. So here you go. So there's these, there's this snail and he's crawling along up the, 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 the uh, trunk of a cherry tree. And there's some birds nearby looking down and going, where are you going to the snail? And the snail says, I'm going to get some cherries. And the birds say, but there's no cherries in the tree. And the snail says, but there'll be birds, there'll be cherries in the tree when I get there. Because see, right? The snail has optimism. The snail understands. The snail has expanded the boundaries. The snail is a maestro, a visionary virtuoso who says, when I get there, the cherries will be there. So if we don't see it right now, when we get there, it will be there. But we must keep working at it and not give up. I'm thinking about the woman who, the, the first woman to swim successfully across the, the Catalina Channel between Cat Avalon and Redondo Beach. And the first time she swam in foggy, cold water and she got across and she got tired and she gave up and she got into the boat. And when she got into the boat and they brought her to shore, it turned out that she was less than a half mile away from the shore. But she had a vision. She's a mental maestro. She went back into the water. She practiced. She swam again. And a few weeks later, she was back out in the channel swimming on another foggy day when once again she could not see the shore, but she swam past the boundary of her limits. She swam past the pain and discomfort. She swam past that moment of being uncomfortable. And even though she couldn't see because it was still foggy, she kept going and she made it this time. And you know what else? She made it and broke the record by two hours for any man that had ever done it before. If we can just keep going in the fog and the smoke and the tear gas and the pain and the tears that are falling from our eyes and the breaking hearts that we're having, if we can just keep on expanding the margins and hold on and use our mental power and our visionary virtuoso skills, we can be in a challenging moment. And I believe that we are up to the moment. We are up to this visionary virtuoso. We have the ability to skillfully see we are all maestros of the mind we are standing on this platform where we can set new intentions malika chopra again in her book living in with intent says intents blossom from your soul from where you truly are we don't all have fame in our futures but that doesn't mean we won't be recognized when we're doing this work somebody might not see you swimming through the fog and getting to the shore 
Somebody might not notice you climb in the cherry tree, even though the cherries aren't there. Somebody might not believe that there's more beyond where we are right now. But if you believe it and can hold to that belief, it will happen because our thoughts are creative and the creative thoughts are what we get to experience. We make a difference. Our influence is felt whether we get recognized for it or not, because by befriending these uncomfortable margins, as terrifying as they are, we do find that transformative power in that beauty that artistic, aesthetic, pleasingly beautiful situation. So I invite you to accept your power as a mental master. Accept your visionary prowess and know that our individual work that we are partaking in right now will impact the whole. It will lift the tide for us all. Dr. Holmes reminds us of it again. He says, we are so one with the whole that what is true of it is also true of us. What is true of you? Whatever is true of you, when you reach inside and think, when you cross back into your liminal moment and look at the grain that's hiding within your chaff, what comes out that is true of you is true of each and every one of us. And so my challenge, my invitation, is to do your practice, become the mental maestro, set your vision, be a skillful use of your talents and your skills, and know that we can move beyond boundaries. We can expand the margins and find that peace that we all experience in those moments of inner silence. And so it is. Join me now as we say our Affirmation for the day. My intentions are in harmony with divine spirit, making my life a divine masterpiece. Hmm. It's now time for prayer. Wow. Okay. Sometimes I need to just breathe a minute between these moments and just get into that too. But I do, it is it is time for our healing prayer. And what I want to invite you to do is to go within and to feel that presence that is within you and to know that you have a divine power that is accessible to you through the use of your mind. And in this moment, I'm going to speak the word for us all and simply know that a divine grace and presence is right here at the very soul of our being. So join me now. So I'm recognizing there is one life. That life is God. That life is my life. That life is your life. That life is the only thing that is, whether it appears to be animate or inanimate, whether it appears to be solid form or an intangible concept or idea or ideal. It is all real. And if it's in my mind, it's available to be in my life. This I know to be true. And what I know to be true for me, I know is true for each and every person that is on this virtue service right now, that will watch it later, that will be hearing about it through a friend or sharing about it in their own time. And this is what I know. I know there is a piece that does not only that has been said to pass all understanding, but deep within there is an understanding of that peace. And I call that peace forth within each and every person right here and now. I know there is a concept called justice and equity, and I call that concept into reality in the lives of all those who are feeling anything less than those ideals in this moment at this time. I know there is an idea in the world of a pandemic and sickness pervading in an uncontrolled way. But I also know there is an original pattern at the source of every person's being, at the core of our being, that knows exactly how to outpicture fullness and wholeness and health. And that picture is unfolding for each and every person right now by this word spoken. I know there is concern for financial lack and limitation in the world, for loss of job and employment, but I know there's only one source, and that divine source is infinitely abundant and has infinite vehicles and ways for transmission for the abundance to be felt by all who are right now hearing this word. There is that power for good in the universe that is using 
each and every one of us to express its goodness. And so I stand in the truth of that power and I recognize that presence as operative in all of our lives. Right here and now, I know peace, love, and joy prevail every person's experience and I'm grateful for that knowledge and therefore I release this prayer into a perfect law that takes these words and makes them into the experiences of all those that are listening to these words unfolding from my heart and my soul. I let it be. And so it is. That was kind of fun having the plane go by at the end in my mind. What I felt like is that my prayer got picked up by flight and flown out into the universe to be expressed for each and every person. Ah, okay. Oh, I see where we're going now. How about this? How about another tune from Carrie Hillary? Thank you, Carrie. That's beautiful. Yes, bring your vision to life. Bring your vision to life. 
Mm -hmm. Be a virtuoso of vision. I'm showing you our our um, pledge that we make during our time of giving. And I'm leaving it up on the screen here because I want you to give a look at these words and understand the power of divine love and understand how this divine love is working for you. And it works for you, through you, by your consciousness. So as we say these words, yes, this is our time for donating to the center for our prosperity and abundance so that we can be here for you each week and so we can be prepared for you at the at the time that we get to return to live service where we're one together. But it also speaks to that very thing that is impacting your own individual life. So like we just did the healing prayer, this is another time for a healing moment. Join me as we say these words and allow these words to be a healing moment for you. Here we go. Divine love, it's doing its perfect work here and now. Divine love harmonizes. Divine love adjusts. Divine love prospers. Divine love foresees everything and richly provides every good thing for CSL Simi Valley now. Let me hear you. Divine love is victorious. CSLCME.org forward slash donating. You can also do the text to give. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But let's bless our giving uh, with our dear Jennifer Nigam. This offering today is an expression of the infinite givingness, the infinite good that is this life, that is spirit, that is God. So grateful for each one of the gifts, whether it's been from online donations, whether you're sending in your tithes, or whether you're gonna call Dr. Susan after the service. So grateful for each one. May these gifts enable the Center for Spiritual Living Simi Valley to give spiritual care to its congregants. May these gifts allow the Center for Spiritual Living Simi Valley serve the greater Simi Valley community. And may all these gifts help make the world a better place, a place that works for everybody. And so it is. Attitudes and for the recap, first of all, I want to thank Dr. Susan who's showing up every Sunday and throughout the week, but every Sunday morning for Play and Learn. Thank you so much, Dr. Susan. And Mark and Dina, hi ho, hi ho. Wow, that's like the Verge theme song. It was so great, and the announcements were so great. Reverend Jennifer Negan, beautiful, beautiful offering of your consciousness, of the reading, of the affirmation, of the of the uh, meditation, so beautifully done. Reverend Stephen, thank you for your inspiring talk. Um, the gratitude, I've seen it in the chat box as well, and also for the talk, so I love So the recap. Um, a mental maestro, be an artful master in life. Visionary, develop keen 
become a virtuoso, to have your specially honed skills. A virtuoso is a person that's highly skilled. In the science of mind, a highly skilled person who uses their mind creatively, constructively, and consciously. Go beyond the margins. Create new boundaries, expanded boundaries. And remember, when we each transform, it transforms the whole. It transforms us all. Thank you for being here today. And remember, I hope to see you this Wednesday for poetry and spiritual practice. No experience with poetry needed. You don't even have to like poetry. But for all the times I've done this practice, people are always uplifted and they find an opening within themselves, within their own hearts they didn't even know was there. So see you Wednesday. Oh, yes. And Reverend Stephen just reminds me, a privilege right after the service, we come together on Zoom and I will post the Zoom link right now. All righty. Thank you, Reverend Johanna. Do appreciate that. Uh, it's been a beautiful experience to be with you this morning. I love having our service. I miss seeing each and every one of you. I know we will have that time where we'll get together very soon. The board meets this week. Uh, next week we'll have a report for you uh, in, this, in the VIRCH service to tell you what we've decided, what our updates are, and keep you posted on where we're going. Uh, let's see. The Wednesday service, as Johanna just mentioned, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'll see you for practicing oneness at one during the week, Monday through Friday. What other things are happening? I think that's about it for now. But have a wonderful, wonderful Sunday, a beautiful flag day. Let it fly. Let the let the red, white, and blue stream overhead near you. Oh, I'm a poet. I didn't know it. Do my feet show it? They're not long fellows. All right. Let's do our closing benediction. Here it is for you right now. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I am living 